Now, I understand that you were on Bridgewater Town Council for an incredible 31 years and are also Bridgewater's longest serving mayor. Just how long were you the mayor of Bridgewater? I was the mayor of Bridgewater for 15 years. And uh, it, the time flew by because I enjoyed what I was doing. I, I liked to serve the people and try to make uh, the community a better place uh, to live and to raise your families. It, so, it, is, it is a pretty, pretty special town in, in my mind. I totally agree. So what do you attribute such longevity? 31 years in politics, that's, a, that's an awful long time. <laughs> well, uh, I think that uh, I'm an average uh, citizen. Uh, I grew up uh, very poor and when I came back to Bridgewater in 1964, uh, I was uh, working for a construction company, Acadia Construction, and uh, they were the biggest employer in the area before Michelin came. And uh, I decided, after a few people asked me to run for council, I decided I'd give it a try and I put my name in and uh, never looked back. So uh, I had uh, I had an incredible run as council and deputy as a councillor and as deputy mayor, and then uh, in 1990 I became uh, mayor and I was there for I guess five, six term, four terms. Let me see, four, five terms. Five threes is fifteen. So it was uh, there were three year terms at that time. Oh, okay. And uh, it was, uh, you know, the town grew, and with Michelin coming, of course, that was, that was a changing factor in uh, employment in the area because they were paying good money, and the other employers, if you were an employer in the town, you had to kind of up the ante in order to get good people to work for you. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I've enjoyed it, and uh, the people have been good to me, and. It's my favorite place to live. Oh, excellent. Yeah. So, what was it like being in municipal government back in the, say, the seventies and the eighties? Well, it was 70s. it was difficult because uh, when I first went on council in nineteen seventy, uh, <clears throat> there was uh, it was still the makeup was the same: six members of council and the mayor. And as the, a new councillor, I had a it was a long a big uh, learning curve for me. And uh, the reason we were so strapped financially is because we had made all these commitments to uh, Michelin Tire to provide all the services and to help with building the plant. And uh, it, was a, it was a nightmare. And it was costly because we had to upgrade our water system, we had to run new uh, sewer lines, we had to put new water lines in uh, that would meet their fire requirements. And uh, that all came from Hebb's Lake in Hebbville, and we had to run it out to Wildville and then into the industrial park. And uh, some days I could, uh, I can still remember, I said, will we ever see the completion of this? But you know what? We, uh, we stuck with it, and uh, Michelin opened, and we've never looked back. It's been, it's been a success story, and we're very fortunate to have uh, the caliber of company that they are to be here and employ 12 or 1500 people yeah. and uh, it's uh, it makes the economy tick in on the South Shore and you know uh, with the uh, disappearance of the Bowater Mercy plant and the sawmill in Oak Hill those are good those are good paying jobs too and it hurts it hurts a lot of people mm -hmm. so uh, we have to be very thankful that uh, Michelin's here. They seem to be doing very well, and we have to treat them good in my books. I agree. So, how was the how has the town changed over the years? So, back in the '70s, yeah. you know, that would be King Street. It would be the residential areas. It would be. It was uh, in 1965 when I came back to town from Halifax. Uh, it was really uh, the west side of. Bridgewater pretty well only. If you lived on the east side, it was uh, the railroad was there, and the Brady Sawmill was there, and the Creamery was there. But other than that, 
it wasn't much uh, much housing development. There were a few houses along La Haye Street and a few on North Street, but nothing else. And that whole wilderness, what we call the Miller property, uh, to the south, that was all woodland. And uh, I can still recall all the facilities were in on the west side. You had the schools and the people from the North Street and La Haye Street, they all walked to school. And I could see them, they only had one bridge, and I can still see those kids coming across to the uh, old wooden bridge, and uh, they were t uh, toddling off to school, and they weren't supervised or anything, and they made it just fine. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's, uh, it's stuck in my mind that, uh, you know, today maybe we... Maybe we offer too much to the young people. <laughs> it, it never hurt anybody to walk a little. No. And because uh, when I grew up uh, in Baker Settlement in the country, why, uh, which is just north of here, uh, I walked four and a half miles to school one way. Oh my God. And I had twelve years of perfect attendance. Yeah. And uh, as you know, back then the snow was over the fence posts, so uh, you had to use snowshoes sometimes. And uh, it was uh, it was an experience, but I think that it ingrains in your in your well-being the uh, what you expect from other people, and uh, I think that the reason I was so successful in uh, municipal government, I think, was because I had an ear for people who didn't have everything, mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot of people struggling out there, and there were then in the in the sixties and seventies. There were a lot of people living with a home on a low income, but they survived. They were they were very uh, innovative, and uh, I think that uh, they deserve a lot of credit. They built the community, but in uh, in the '60s, the late '60s, I can remember big controversy. We had angle parking on on King Street, and that was the business district. Uh, they had uh, and then it come along the uh, Gateway Railway property on High Street. We used to be at a racetrack. Okay. And I can remember the races up there. I can remember the horse races. Oh That's how old I am. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they had an oval. And uh, horse racing was big. Harley Spence was one of the people that he used to be the MLA for here. And he had horses. And they, every Saturday night they'd have horse races. <laughs> and they'd get big crowds. But then they. I can still remember the Hollywood Daredevils, the car races. Mm -hmm. They'd come and they'd put on our show and they would pack the place. There'd be thousands of people there from all over the Lunenburg and Queens County. Mm -hmm. It was a big a big night. It was something like the exhibition used to be in the olden days. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyways, uh, the angle parking on King Street was quite prominent. The maple trees were there. Yeah, uh, but it was hard to get in your pocket's place and a lot harder to get out because <laughs> uh, it was the main thoroughfare and it was always traffic. Okay. And the, the merchants, they did well because uh, it was the, the shopping center of uh, the whole area. Mm -hmm. And uh, there were some garages there and of course they've all gone to Auto Row now in Hebville, pretty well all of them except the Honda. And, uh, well, I guess the Regans are on North, North Street, so I shouldn't say they're all gone. Yeah. But uh, they, uh, there was quite an exodus of that. Any merchants that stand out? Any any names? Any any merchant characters? Yes. Uh, Rofi's Menswear mm -hmm. would be one. That's a long-standing thing, and of course the financial institutions, the banks always, they always uh, were very faithful to the downtown core. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important that you have those because without the financial institutions. King Street would really be hurt. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, I call it Lehman's Shoe Store, but it's King Street Shoes now. Uh, but uh, Mr. Lehman was there and <clears throat> he, had a, he had a thriving business, especially in the rubber boot department. <laughs> 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 so uh, it, was, uh, it, was quite, uh, it was quite the little town on a picturesque river with one bridge. And yeah. uh, like I said, all the action was on the west side of the river. Okay. Now, of course, over the 40 years, that's changed quite a bit mm -hmm. because now all the new homes or a lot of new homes are on the, the east side of the river and uh, there's some facilities over there and uh, 
you've got the shopping centers, and it attracts a lot of people. And of course, b having all that developed, you needed a second bridge, which we put in and in my uh, during my reign on council, and uh, it was uh, it was quite an undertaking. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I look back, Saturday night was, uh, and I can recall that uh, uh, the merchants always had when uh, Wednesday afternoon was employee day, and they closed their stores. Every if you wanted to shop in Bridgewater on Wednesday, you had to do it in the morning because at twelve o'clock the stores closed, and they had the afternoon. To, 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 but they were open on Saturdays then. Okay. So uh, it was uh, the rules weren't quite so stringent as they are now. But uh, most people had it worked on uh, Wednesday morning, went home Wednesday afternoon, and then they come back and work till Saturday night. And then it's Sunday off, so they really only had a day and a half off. Yeah, no. yeah. Hmm. And, and that happened uh, for everybody. Mm -hmm. So uh, I can recall that, and uh, it was it was quite different. Mm -hmm. You were saying you were putting when they you were around when they put in the new bridge. Yes. So how was that? Did uh, was there any problems associated with putting in the new bridge, or was just no? Uh, we were fortunate because uh, they did a traffic survey off of uh, Aberdeen Road and Victoria Road and the Department of Transportation said that <clears throat> it was needed and they would they would help cost share and so they did. Okay. So, because uh, we wouldn't have been able to afford to, to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, probably right now the same situation in my opinion is uh, when we look at North Street, I mean we have to do some, uh, or council has to do some upgrading there and I don't think it's within their financial means to do it on their own. I think that the provincial government has to help. Mm -hmm. Now I don't know if there's, there was negotiations that were ongoing, and I, I hope they are, and I hope that the problems will come across, because uh, just the acquisition of the property is going to be monstrous, yeah. and it's, it's far beyond the revenues of, of the town to do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see how it unfolds, but it does it does need attention. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. <coughs> So, getting back to politics, what was your biggest disappointment as a municipal politician? Was there anything that... Uh, yes, I think that uh, without being specific, I was disappointed. I was usually a nay, a nay voter <laughs> because I could see that we were doing things we couldn't afford. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually there was enough people in council who uh, were well-to-do people, and they said, well, we need it, and we should have it. But you can only have what you can afford. Mm -hmm. So my disappointment was that we got involved in some things that we shouldn't have, mm -hmm. and certainly things that we couldn't afford. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the museum here is uh, it's, uh, a wonderful facility. And we, while I was on council and the mayor, we struggle financially to keep this place afloat. It's a wonderful facility. Artifacts, what, 8,000 artifacts, mm -hmm. over 8,000. And I think that, you know, it bears uh, attention. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is, and I think the time will come when we may have to cut back on our hours, or hopefully not staff, but mm -hmm. Uh, the budgets are drying up, especially for non-essential services. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can see, like during the winter, I imagine that the hours are reduced anyway, but I would hate to see it close completely during the winter. But, you know, it's going to be a struggle for Council and for the Museum Commission to uh, find the funding. Because mm -hmm. uh, right from the Feds down to the pro province and to us, uh, it, things are drying up. Mm -hmm. and. I don't like to say that, but it's true. <laughs> it is what it is, right? <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so then what was your proudest moment as a municipal politician? Well, I would say uh, we, uh, we built a new school for the elementary school mm -hmm. and put an addition on for the high school. Mm -hmm. And I would say those two things were uh, the highlight while I was there. And of course, uh, getting a new hospital in 1988, I believe it was, 
uh, we worked hard with the <coughs> Department of Health in that respect and to get a regional hospital and to have it in Bridgewater was that was a big uh, a big plus for us mm -hmm. and I, I was pretty proud that we could accomplish that mm -hmm. and uh, as it, I mean it's a nice location and uh, but they are bulging at the seams as well as everybody knows healthcare mm -hmm. I think has to be number one in uh, in our all our priorities because mm -hmm. if you don't have your health mm -hmm. you don't have much yeah right yeah. so I, I think the hospital opening of the hospital and uh, <coughs> the the two school the new school for the elementary schools we had the old annex there for years and years and it was it was long past its lifetime mm -hmm. but it, as you know it's hard to get new facilities when the province is paying mm -hmm. but anyway we uh, we were able to accomplish that and uh, uh, you know just the overall uh, growth of the town made me feel that we must be doing something right mm -hmm. and uh, but I was always the advocate of uh, trying to keep your taxes down because or you know a little reasonable because I think that uh, I don't know what percentage of people are struggling but I would say that you're in the 60 to 70 percent right now of people that are in fi either fixed incomes or not making a big wage mm -hmm. and they're trying to keep their home and raise a family and it's hard mm -hmm. so uh, we have to be uh, have to recognize that and I'm hoping that the new council will be very considerate of that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pass that along. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything Ernie that you would have done differently? You know in hindsight right? Well uh, yes I think uh, the, we made a big mistake. Uh, everybody wanted the mall, the uh, lands where the Bridgewater Mall everybody except me <laughs> wanted to say yes to everything to the developer mm -hmm. and Harry Cook was the mayor when I believe it was Harry Cook was the mayor and I was the deputy mayor and uh, when they came to her, it was a fellow by the name of Gary Hurst from Halifax who owned who owned the land he accu accumulated all the land through the railroad when the railway disappeared in the 90s well he he grabbed up that land and wanted to develop uh, a shopping center mm -hmm. and that was fine I wanted him to come but I wanted to maintain the riverfront uh, I didn't want him putting that uh, those structures right out against the water mm -hmm. I wanted to move the I wanted to move the La Haye Street as it is now I wanted to move that down by the water and have a green area there and then have the, and have the parking everything up back Mm -hmm. And it would have it would have focused on the river itself, and I always felt bad that it didn't happen because I think, yes, we wanted the shopping center and we wanted the business, but it, we should have had a, a more focus on the river, mm -hmm. from the, especially from the east side because the elevation is good there, mm -hmm. and uh, but it didn't happen. I lost my vote. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, anyways, that's the way it goes. Mm -hmm. Majority rules. Majority rules. Right. <coughs> but I think it would have been a, a much better project if we had focused on the river mm -hmm. rather than on the buildings itself. Okay. Now, you, everybody nowadays is talking about the the parkades. Yes. What are your thoughts on those? Or what are your? Do you have any stories or comment on those? Well, it was uh, it was very controversial when they decide Mr. Gleekman decided to uh, go ahead and put parkades in there to save the businesses. Now he was, Mr. Gleeman was? He was a, a clothing merchant okay. at Gleeman's menswear. Okay. <coughs> and where would he be located on King Street He would have today? been located just south of Phoenix Street on King where I think there's a pizza place there now. Okay. And uh, he had a pretty good business and uh, he was he was determined that we needed more parking, which we did. And I believe that they've served uh, a useful purpose for people that go to, uh, you know, when I see people going to the Bank of Montreal or to the Royal Bank, <coughs> they're all using parkades. Mm -hmm. And if you didn't have them, I know it's a big upkeep, but if you didn't have those, I think that you'd see people move into other areas mm -hmm. uh, for doing the business. Yeah. And uh, 
I'm hoping that the banks, as I said earlier, I think the banks are very important to keep the the uh, downtown area alive. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not uh, wholly dependent on that, but it is, it's an important part. So I believe that uh, the parkades have to stay and the angle parking is out because it's just not going to work. Mm -hmm. And you lose quite a few parking spaces too. Okay. So uh, I don't want to tamp, I don't want to, I wouldn't like to see uh, the, the traffic flow in town uh, tampered with uh, in relation to removing the barricades. I think be a tremendous cost to do it too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that it'll stay and they'll try to keep them in repair and people will still use them. Okay. <coughs> During your time in council, they, they created um, Shipyard's Landing. That's a great spot. Yes, uh, that is uh, that is one of my favorite recreational accomplishments. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was mayor, uh, we wanted to develop something along the river, and with the elevation right on King Street around the post office, the elevation was just too too steep. So <clears throat> we looked at the, what is now Shipyards Landing, and the town owned a little section of land there, and uh, the Eisenhowers from Lunenburg used to have Acadia gas engines, okay. and they had uh, two big pieces of land there, one on either side of the town. So <clears throat> I engaged in uh, some discussions on, on my own, without council's uh, approval. Mm -hmm. I, I tried to have a fact-finding mission mm -hmm. with the, the two brothers, mm -hmm. Andrew and Martin, and uh, I said to them, look, this land is contaminated because they had a foundry there, mm -hmm. and I said, "What are you going to be able to? What are you going to be able to develop there? Uh, really, you're pretty limited. So why don't you discuss with the town possibility of, of the town buying it for a reduced price, considering it as an environmental hazard? You can you can use an environmentally contaminated soil for uh, for a parkland." if you cover it over and seed it in. And uh, so we had a couple of years of it, and I still remember, I mean, they they started out with, uh, I believe, $300,000, so they went up for the two parcels of land. And uh, we ended up, uh, I believe we paid them $70,000. Wow. And we got, and then that gave us all of Shipyard's Landing, but including the town, the town's portion. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> we got that, and uh, started to uh, do a little landscape and put the rock wall in and before you know it within four or five years official opening shipyards landing and we're pretty proud of the name because uh, not uh, long before my time but they used to build ships right there on on King Street okay. and they'd have they'd have this part of the new ship's hull would be sticking right out in the street there are pictures of that Wow. And, they, and all the workers would go there, and they they build these schooners, and uh, it was a it was a thriving shipyard. Mm -hmm. So uh, somebody came along, and we had a contest for naming it. And I can't remember who suggested Shipyard's Landing, but it was very appropriate, and it's quite an addition to the town, mm -hmm. and well used, I might say. And the bandstand is there now, yeah, that's right. and uh, it's a very pleasant place to visit, especially if you have a boat. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. A be beautiful boat launch, and uh, no, it it turned out nice, and I'm, I'm pretty proud of that as well, as far as uh, from a recreation standpoint. Okay. Uh, quite a change. Yeah, absolutely. So I felt uh, pretty uh, pretty good when we took it to council, and uh, we finally ended up with uh, I believe sixty five or seventy thousand dollars for a price tag. Seemed like a lot of money, but it was well worth it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and it is well used. Yeah, got a bill for the future, right? You got a bill for the future, yeah, right? Absolutely. And uh, it's not a, once you got it. Once we got it in and got the rock wall up and the landscaping. I mean, the maintenance. We got the parks and recreation anyway, so our public works and they they maintain it, and it's part of the ongoing uh, cost for for recreation mm -hmm. facilities. But it is uh, it, it is pretty. A pretty place, uh, pretty good place to be proud of. Yeah. And what about other town facilities like uh, the Duck Pond or Kinsman Field or the the arena? Well, the Kinsman Field, uh, as a, 
I was a, I'm a life member of the Bridgewater Kinsman Club, and uh, we took over in 19, I think 19, before I came to town, the Kinsmen had adopted the Kinsmen Field as their pet project, and they were hell-bent to put a, uh, a recreation facility there, and it was a lot of drainage problems. We spent hundreds of thousands of dollars there, but we raised a lot of money through the radio auction. And <clears throat> we would uh, raise money and then we'd go down and get uh, an engineer to, we had some engineers on our club and they all did the, the drainage uh, scenarios. And we got, uh, we kept improving it and kept improving it and by gosh, it turned out pretty good. Yeah. But uh, we put a pile of money into it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they, uh, I'm, uh, I'm in the K-40 now instead of Kinsman, uh, just uh, Senior senior group, but uh, I think the Kinsmen still uh, are pretty pretty supportive of uh, the upkeep of it, mm -hmm. and uh, the bar, the baseball diamonds and the tennis courts. It's it's uh, it's a nice addition to the recreation facilities in the town. Absolutely, and uh, it's well used. Mm -hmm. so, so what about Woodland Garden? Woodland Gardens is another one, and uh, you know that uh, I think that. If I recall correctly, that sort of came about through the uh, uh, Friends of the Desert mm -hmm. and they could see that uh, you know that it was such a beautiful woodland gardens for everybody to enjoy. It's free, and uh, that came into being, and you know they 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 put a lot of money into it. Mm -hmm. uh, the Friends of the Desert Museum and the Woodland Gardens Association. So. Uh, I'm uh, take my hat off to them because they are, they've uh, it was a well designed, uh, well designed and well thought out project and it was well well received in the community. Mm -hmm. so. Well, as a politician, are there any characters that you came across in your political life, not your personal life so much, but more in your political life? People that maybe from Halifax that you had to deal with, or people from other parts of the community, whether it's. Uh, uh, our community or, or, or surrounding communities? Well, <clears throat> I can't specifically think of uh, uh, any characters, but uh, well, it was uh, Raymond Yui was, he was sort of the, the historian. He was, uh, some people thought that he was a little uh, Oh, the, the elevator didn't go quite to the top floor, but he had a fantastic history, knowledge of the town. Mm -hmm. And you could sit down with Raymond and he could tell you things that happened a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. And I did that a few times. And uh, Raymond was very, very knowledgeable about the history and I always regretted that we didn't have someone like we're doing here. Yeah sat down and talk about uh, the history of how it evolved up to the time it was incorporated in 1899. Mm -hmm. And uh, that wasn't done and it's lost mm -hmm. because Raymond's passed on now. But uh, he was he was really, he, he told me things about the town uh, in one point that I could hardly believe mm -hmm. and uh, oh, how things happened. But you know, the, we've transformed from a, a railroad town into a tire town, I think. Because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, back in the, uh, I think the railroad left around 91 and 92, and uh, they were the big employer in the, in the area. When you got to be working for Canadian National, you had it made. Mm -hmm. You had a good income, had good employee benefits, and those people made good money far above uh, anybody else in the, in the area. But uh, it all went down the drain when they decided to discontinue rail service in South Shore. <coughs> and uh, I would say that it was it it was a quite a changeover, but with Michelin coming on it sort of eased that pain because a lot of people that couldn't get on the railroad or didn't have a job, they were able to go to Michelin. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, it really filled the void. Okay. So uh, we, uh, it was something like, I think when Moncton, uh, the railroad used to be a big employer in Moncton, mm -hmm. and uh, they survived it, and uh, Sears, I believe they were in Moncton as well, a big distribution center, they employed a lot of people. Mm -hmm. But uh, Bridgewater, we, I think we handled it pretty good. And uh, once the railway had disappeared, we, of course, uh, acquired the, the rails, the rail property, and made the trail, walking trail. Mm -hmm. And uh, Michelin helped us a lot with that. Okay. They made a, quite a substantial contribution. Pretty proud when we opened that. Yeah. So using the, the memory of Raymond, Yes. Uh, is there anything? Is there anything that you can say today that a people from fifty or a hundred or one hundred and fifty years ago will say? My God! So that's how that had, that's how that came about. And it may be insignificant to you now, but it may be a big deal. I think uh, what I liked about his knowledge was where people lived, mm -hmm. and he knew people, where people lived from Cooks Falls right to La Have. Mm -hmm. And uh, one summer, one of the uh, Canada Day boat tours. I was, uh, I, my wife and I went out on the boat tour and we sat next to Raymond. And we went down to La Have and back. And you know, he knew every house of who lived there. And it was people that, you know, the Davisons or the Bradys or whoever it was. He, uh, he always, uh, he always, when you, once you got to talk, and he could really fill you in on a lot of the history. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's that's what I that's my highlight with Raymond was uh, his knowledge of where people lived. Now, do you have a knowledge now that you can share with people that a hundred hundred years from now people may say, "Holy cow!" So that's that's how that came about, or that's that's uh, why that's there, or, or that's why well, they did it that way. Or I think I, I just briefly touched on about the the uh, Bridgewater Mall because mm -hmm. uh, that uh, I would have liked. To, I'm glad to hear. Mm -hmm. But I would have liked to see it located differently. Yeah. And I believe uh, now that we see the end result, I think that the people that made the decision probably agree with me. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's too late. Yeah. It's too late. Yeah. So anyway, that's uh, that's probably it. Okay. They say that if you want to get something done, you have to give it to a busy person. Mm -hmm. I understand that in addition to your commitments to your family, work, and the town, you're also a volunteer in a number of community groups and organizations. Why don't you tell me about those? Well, <clears throat> I'm. Uh, I was quite active in our church, the United Bridgewater United Church, and uh, I was a clerk of the congregation for 25 years, and uh, I was an elder, and my wife is an elder. I taught Sunday school for a long time. I don't know how many years, but because uh, uh, up in Baker Settlement where I grew up, I was a, son a superintendent of our Lutheran ch Sunday school. And uh, it sort of uh, gets in your system. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, uh, we saw the transformation of the United Church. From, they used, we used to have our church on the corner of uh, Dominion and Queen. There's an apartment building there. Yeah, okay. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, we actually, my wife and I were married there in 1963 in the old church, but it was starting to fall down. Mm -hmm. So we bought the property up on Hillcrest Street, mm -hmm. and uh, we built an auditorium, and we didn't build a church right away because we couldn't afford it. And uh, we, we held services in the auditorium for four or five years. And then we finally got enough money together to uh, build a new church, mm -hmm. which is a very nice yes, addition to the to community. And uh, I'm... Uh, I'm still active in the Kinsman and K-40 clubs and I always try to get out to any of the fundraisers or whatever I can do to help. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was, uh, <clears throat> after I, uh, after 2004, when I kind of retired from mayor, uh, I became chairman of the Nova Scotia Human Rights Commission. Oh, okay. And I was chair of that for six years, uh, and it was something that I really enjoyed. And uh, I had had to travel to Halifax for the meetings, of course, and they were only once a month, which wasn't a big issue. But it still took time. But it was a 
a very rewarding experience for me. Mm -hmm. And uh, we raised, uh, Meryl and I raised three kids here in town and they all uh, did pretty well. Mm -hmm. uh, I have two nurses and an electronic engineer. So, okay. Uh, and uh, they're raising their own families now and yeah. I get to see them once in a while. Oh, good. I understand that you, for the Kinsman Club, any any projects that you worked on as a member of the Kinsman Club? Because Kinsman is really well, important for the community, apart from the field. Uh, the field, uh, the hospital. We yeah. furnished uh, some of the wings of the hospital, okay. both up here and over there. And you were on the hospital board too, weren't you? I was on the hospital board for nine years. Nine years, wow. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, it was an experience. Uh -huh. And. Uh, now, is that at the old center, the Dawson site, or the new site? Uh, the, the old site. The old site. And then, I think we're over there for maybe a year or so, okay. and then I get off the board. And uh, it was uh, that was a rewarding experience, I must say, because when you try uh, working uh, budgets with healthcare, mm -hmm. it's pretty scary. Yeah, that must have been something getting the, getting the hospital moved and being involved oh, in that. It was, it yeah. was indeed. Yeah. What can you tell us about that? Because you know, hundred years from now, people are going to say, "Wow." Yeah. Well, uh, we had uh, we had, we thought at one at one time that we could put a, another expansion on the existing hospital up here and keep it, mm -hmm. but the the site wasn't very acceptable for modern day travelers. Mm -hmm. And uh, so <clears throat> we trying to uh, finally convince the Department of Health that we provided the land and raised 20% of the money, mm -hmm. which we did. Okay. Uh, the community was uh, they pulled together. How much money did you have to raise, Ernie? Do you remember? I think uh, we raised uh, almost 10 million dollars. Wow. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, it was similar to what the Lifestyle Center is going through now. Mm -hmm. And uh, but they did it. And the province come through and paid the rest, so uh, we were we were pretty lucky. Mm -hmm. So I think that's. But I was just uh, I wasn't on the board when they actually made the move. So I'm trying to think. It's quite a while ago. Yeah, well, yeah. But I'm uh, trying to think. But I know that it was quite a quite a procedure to move all that equipment over. Mm -hmm. And of course, they got a lot of new equipment too. But uh, the old hospital had its day, and they needed they needed a new a new leave. Who were some of the people involved on the board, or some of the people <coughs> that made that happen? Do you have any names? Uh, yes, uh, Doctor Rotter, R O W T E R. He was uh, he was the chief of staff, I believe, and he was also a board member. Uh, Harry Cook was one of the. Uh, board members, uh, Marge Thiexman, who just uh, passed away last year, she was on the board for a long time. Uh, Kendall Kenny was a solicitor in town and a very knowledgeable legal advisor, and he was the hospital uh, solicitor, and he kept us out of the courthouse pretty well all the time. <laughs> so. Uh, and Robert Manthon was the chair of the board when they uh, when they actually went through the building program. And uh, Robert was uh, a lifelong resident of Bridgewater, and he worked very hard to see that accomplished. Mm -hmm. And he did that. So uh, I'd say hats off to Robert. Now, where would Robert have lived in the town? Robert would have lived on North King Street. Mm -hmm. Some people would call it the Barrens. I call it a beautiful part of the town. Mm -hmm. And uh, he just his house would uh, was just demolished. It was, uh, <coughs> you know, where the uh, 103 is, the overpass. Mm -hmm. It would have been the house to the north of that first house. Okay. And uh, his home that was his homestead, and he lived there all his life until he died. Mm -hmm. But uh, he was, and he was on town council as well. Okay. So I would say uh, he. Uh, he certainly made a good contribution. Excellent, excellent. He was actually he was a banker by trade. He was the, I think he was in the Royal Bank if I remember correctly. He was a little bit older than I was, so <laughs> I think that he was in the bank for a number of years, and then he retired back here. Okay, and I also understand that you may have been uh, in the fire department. I was in the fire department for fifteen years. Fifteen years. Yeah, I was uh, an officer in the fire department. I was secretary and uh, really enjoyed the, the 
friendship I made. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, a lot of the people are still, actually, I was in the bank yesterday and my cap, the captain of my fire unit was in there and he came over and he said, are you going to be packing hose tonight? <laughs> <laughs> now, who was that? Who was the captain? Uh, Gushy Nogler, or Wilfred Nogler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, we always talk when we see each other and mm -hmm. he's uh, been a long time friend. Now, why was Mr. Nogler called Gushy? Uh, that's a, just a nickname. Just a nickname? Uh, I, I have no idea. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't, he, he had that name when he came, when I got to know him. He okay. was always Gushy, never Wilfred. Mm -hmm. And any, uh, any uh, anything about the fire department that, that comes to mind? Well, major, I, I, major I, fires possibly, or just things that change and major well, changes? Well, I remember when the bridge went out, uh, the old bridge went out, we were... What year was that, roughly? Boys, I think it was, I'd be guessing, probably 72 or 73. And I know the mayor was, <clears throat> I was the deputy mayor. It might have been 74. Uh, I was the deputy mayor and the mayor was away. And I had to go down there and they had to call a state of emergency. And it was quite a procedure. And. Uh, Nat Dupree, who was the uh, administrator at the hospital, he was the EMO coordinator. So I got the call to go, and I went down. I think it was 1974. Anyways, that's it's close anyway. And uh, I could I stood in the King Street side of the of the river, and I watched that ice come down. And it just like matchsticks took that bridge right out. Oh my God! Couldn't believe it. And you know the fire department, uh, they've played a big role in the town over the years. They've uh, certainly modernized, and I know it's expensive, but I guess you only get what you pay for. And uh, we've had, we've had a couple outstanding fire fire chiefs, who uh, were who were leaders and. I can think of uh, Frank Gow mm -hmm. and Harold Angel mm -hmm. and Bill Rodenizer. They were, they all progressed the apartment. Mm -hmm. And uh, with a growing town, you need a good fire department. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I give them a lot of credit for, for that. Oh, excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. I understand that you're in the Social Regional uh, Library? I was. I was chair of the Social Regional Library mm -hmm. for. Three or four years. Three or four years, yeah. And I was a board member for maybe eight. Okay. And uh, that was a, that was a challenge. And uh, I uh, we didn't have a lot of money then. Uh, I guess that seems to be the the theme song these days: yeah. shortage of money. But uh, uh -huh. you know, you had to make do with what you had. And uh, we were. It'll be exciting when the library gets uh, up in the new facility. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, because they, they're sort of diverse now, and they got the, the central one in, on King Street, and I hate to see that close because, uh, you know, it'll be another empty building. Mm -hmm. But uh, I don't think you can operate two, so uh, you probably be selling that building and maybe get some tax revenue. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So, uh, but the library is a very important part of the, uh, you know, there's so much technology now people say well you don't need libraries but you do mm -hmm. uh, to some degree and uh, I think uh, they, they run a pretty good ship mm -hmm. so, that's that's great. Um, getting back to maybe the politics the town of Bridgewater mm -hmm. uh, competes or has to cooperate with the town of Mahone Bay the town of Lunenburg all yeah. within the community all with, all surrounded by the municipality for the district of Lunenburg and right. all up with with Chester the form Lunenburg County yep do you have any thoughts on that uh, do you have any uh, any comments uh, stories about maybe how how things progressed over your term as a councillor, the 31 years as a councillor, or, or the 12 years as a mayor? Yeah. Well, I think... Uh, or 15. Yeah, 15 and, 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 four, or 15 and 16. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I think that uh, things sort of stalled. I, I was a proponent of a regional government. Mm -hmm. And I lost some friends because of it, because they said, no, you can't do that. But I just thought that we were too parochial on uh, s protecting our own turf. 
And you know, for 45 or 50,000 people, we don't, meet, we don't need that many elected people. Uh, I, I have a lot of uh, admiration for people that run for office and get elected. But uh, <clears throat> we, could, uh, we could combine our administration, and I think the taxpayer, citizens alike, would be better served and they, it would cost us a heck of a lot better, or less. Mm -hmm. And uh, some people criticized me for that. I was a proponent of our, our uh, high school going with Parkdale, mm -hmm. and we actually had a plebiscite. And uh, I, lost, <laughs> I lost some votes there <laughs> because uh, they said, no, we don't want to be part of Parkview, that's for the county. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's not the way to look at it, in my opinion. Yeah. And uh, we had enough students that we could have filled that uh, Parkview Education Center and had one thriving high school. Mm -hmm. And it, the fact that it was in North King Street didn't bother me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, don't, I don't look at boundaries, I look at the opportunities. And uh, I think that the time will come where you'll have a regional government. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be a big regional government, you know. I think I'm a firm believer that if you get more than a, a dozen people uh, doing something, it's too many. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's uh, you can get the you can get a taste for what people want if you got seven or nine or eleven or twelve, and uh, it'll work. Mm -hmm. But uh, I I just I'm somewhat disappointed that it hasn't happened to this date. But I guess I'll still wait. Do you have a date when you think it might happen? I think they'll be forced into it probably within 20 years. Within 20 years, yeah, I think so. And uh, I don't have any, I don't have any fear of going in with uh, into a regional government because mm -hmm. I think that uh, we could provide a lot better service for less money. Okay. Okay. Um, what was it like for you and Marilyn raising a family of three in town? So I guess what we're trying to do is try to paint a picture of what life would have been like. Yeah. You know back when your children were born, when you were a young young man and your and your wife Marilyn was a was a beautiful young woman and, and you know, how would you spend your leisure time? What would you do? Um, particularly as it pertains to the town. So what we're trying to do is paint a picture of the town sure. back in the back in the sixties, seventies yep. and, and eighties. Well it was uh, they were lean years, but uh we all was employed. My wife uh, was a secretary with the church. Okay. She worked uh, just half days. And uh, we were able to uh, raise three kids, and uh, our, our activities, we didn't have a lot of social life. Our social life was the Kinsman Club. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a great fellowship in that club. There's no question about it, and there's always something happening on the weekend. So that's how we, it wasn't expensive, and we could afford to do it. And uh, the church played a big role in, in both our lives. Uh, Marilyn was a... A tremendous worker in the church and in the auxiliaries, mm -hmm. and uh, I was involved, as I said, with the with politics and, as you know, with the number of committees that you're on, mm -hmm. you're away a lot. Yeah. So uh, we we survived, and uh, but we spent a lot of time with uh, Sunday school, church, and I don't say I'm not saying that I'm over religious. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that we did, we brought the kids up and uh, we, they always went to Sunday school and I think they're a lot better people for it mm -hmm. because of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, we still attend church and uh, although I don't teach Sunday school, I miss it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, it was, it was good. Did you have uh, any favorite stores that you shopped at? Stores that just stood out? Uh, well, the the Metropolitan was uh, was good, and uh, Gow's Gow's Home Hardware, of course. They used to be in King Street with a furniture store. Okay. And Rofi's was always, uh, and the Gleekman's Menswear was there, mm -hmm. and uh, Lehman Shoe Store. So okay. those are the ones that that I stand. Uh, and where and where would Maryland have gone? Any oh, Maryland would. Uh, there was a, a dress uh, shop called Ashkins. And that's where she, most people bought there. And who owned Ashkins at the time? Do you know? Boys. That's okay. No, I don't know. Yeah. I don't okay. Know. No. Do you have any favorite restaurants? Are there any restaurants? Well, or the, rail the railroad restaurant, uh, 
when the railroad was there and the roundhouse was there, there was a great place to eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'd go there, and that sort of disappeared in the 80s, I believe. But up till then, if you wanted a good meal, that's probably where you went. Okay. And uh, have good memories of that. Mm -hmm. And uh, other than that, and Little Red's restaurant on a corner of Aberdeen and North, they, uh, that was just a very small restaurant, but they had good food. Okay. And uh, always used to go there. Mm -hmm. well, I think that's probably. And then of course the Wandelin came, and uh, they they had they had a good restaurant as well. Okay. So, I think I think that was probably it. Okay. And what about cars? Did you buy cars back in your your time? Yes, but I spent too much money on my cars. <laughs> Anyways, I had the I had a lot of nice cars, and mm -hmm. uh, not you know they weren't luxurious, they weren't mm -hmm. Cadillacs, but uh, I did. I wasted a lot of money on cars, but okay. I, I did. I'm a car nut. I, okay. I like uh, I like to have a nice car. And you would have bought those in Bridgewater? Oh yeah, always bought my cars in Bridgewater. Okay. I believe in shopping locally. Okay. Yeah. Great. <clears throat> okay. So I guess, uh, do you have any final comments or some words of advice that you'd leave the, like to leave for someone listening to this, say 50, 100, or 150 years from now? Any, any final words, words of advice? Uh, well, I think uh, from my point of view, we should always uh, be thankful for being able to live in, a, in an area so beautiful as this. Uh, we have the beaches 15 or 20 minutes away. We have the people in Bridgewater and area are wonderful, friendly people. And they're, they're an asset to everybody. And I think that what I, what I think people should uh, view as important is the type of life the, the caliber of life that they can enjoy with, uh, with not, without breaking the bank. And uh, I, I hope that people will appreciate the, uh, you know, it's all right to say we want, we want, but we have to be reasonable. And you can do a lot of things uh, in Bridgewater that doesn't cost you a nominal leg. And, uh, you know, we have good recreation facilities. It's about to get better with the li Lifestyle Center. And I'm hoping that, you know, I think it's an attractive place for people to come, especially seniors. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, I'd say, uh, can't beat it. Best place in the world to live.